On this episode of Lady K Sailing, we are going to take you on a tour of the mega yacht mecca that is Fort Lauderdale. And we're going to be talking all about Active Captain, how you can use it to figure out where you're going, where to anchor, what the bridge heights are, marina prices, and all sorts of cool stuff. All right, so we are in Fort Lauderdale now, and it is Friday, so we are going to try to upload an episode. Now the episode is done and ready to go, but there's a bit of a problem being back in the States, and that is internet is a bit more difficult to come by, and there's a few reasons for that. In the Bahamas, cellular internet is very cheap, and we're able to afford to just put money on a SIM card and use that. And the cell service is really good in the Bahamas, but in the States, cellular service is extremely expensive like more than double the price of the bahamas if we want to just have some data on a sim card we do have a sim card we have a little bit of data on it but we can't afford to put as much data as is needed to upload an episode every week so what we used on the way down through the u.s was our wi-fi antenna on the top of our mast but since our almost sinking incident a few months back that antenna has not worked we suspect it's a problem with the ethernet wire so i've rewired it today i've spent all morning trying to sort it out and get it to work and it is not happening. Um, we're just going to go get in the dinghy and go be Wi-Fi pirates and ride around Fort Lauderdale until we can find a good Wi-Fi signal somewhere that it's fast and strong and then we'll come back and get the computer and see what we can do. So we happen to know a few of the Wi-Fi passwords for a few of the marinas because we uh, did stay in a couple on the way down so we're hoping we can find one of those but if not it might be like uh, Starbucks or something so uh, we'll see we're gonna go check it out we're gonna bring you guys with us let's go. So we're anchored right now in Lake Sylvia, which is very nice. It's very protected and very surrounded by multi-million dollar homes. Check it out. So it's a pretty cool spot and uh, it's a very, very uh, populated area, very densely populated. So I think we should be able to see some Wi-Fi. We can see like 50 networks from the laptop in the boat. Uh, but they're all locked, right? So we're gonna go see if we can find something that's not, or that we know the password to. Let's go check it out. So we were just motoring out into the channel to go find a coffee shop for Wi-Fi. And the guy right behind us, he was pulled over just outside this little cut we're in, right on the ICW, by a Florida police boat. And he got a ticket for going a little bit faster than idle as he crossed the ICW. And crossing the ICW, it's very choppy right now, so you're just best off to get the bow up and go. Well, that's what he tried to do, and he got pulled over right away and he got a ticket. We were right there, so we're gonna go back to the boat and get our life jackets because usually they're in the dinghy, but right now they're not. Uh, we took them out last night and uh, we just didn't think to grab them this morning, but uh, we're gonna go get them. And also he said, make sure you have the registration for your dinghy in the dinghy because these Florida cops are so brutal on dinghies that, yeah, you gotta make sure you got all your uh, I's dotted and T's crossed. We're gonna go get all our stuff together and then we're gonna go back and look for a coffee shop. Okay, we got our life jackets, we got all our paperwork, and we're going nice and slow, and the police are right there.
Lightning McQueen's convertible cousin. <laughs> So we're definitely not in the Bahamas anymore. It's uh, a wee bit busier here. Anyway, we found this place called Batteries and Bulbs. We're gonna see if we get, holy moly, uh, a bulb for our bow light so that we can run at night because that uh, bulb burned out and it's a very specific bulb. So let's check it out. Okay, got the bulb, two of them for five bucks. Hope it's the right one. Oh man, just everything here smells like diesel. And, and I don't know, city, it smells like city. When you're in the Bahamas for months, you just forget about this, right? Anyway, I guess back to the dinghy. Y'all coming up right quick, come on, come on right Hello. quick, man. So, uh, I just want to give a quick shout out. Uh, we've eaten at Southport Rabar in Fort Lauderdale for a couple nights now, and it's been fantastic. So, just want to uh, give a quick shout out to the uh, man behind the grill. Milk. What's your name? Milkson. Milkson? Milkson, M-I-L-T-O-N. Best oh. oysters in the world. Best oysters in the world. Okay. It's her first oyster. Probably not doing it right. Uh, there we go. There we go. Put a little chew in there just for catch. Holy crap. Why don't I eat oysters every day? I have no idea, you've never had them before. Oh my God. Okay, it's a beautiful day in Fort Lauderdale and we made some friends on Instagram and they told us about a beach just around the way called, or it's a creek called Whiskey Creek, but there's a beach there and they said they were hanging out there. So we're gonna go see if we can find it. It's a bit of a long dinghy ride. We have to go up the ICW, I don't know, it looks like a mile or two, but. Uh, we're gonna go check it out, so we're gonna bring you guys with us, show you around um, pretty much the mega yacht central of everywhere we've ever been, Fort Lauderdale. So let's go check it out. <laughs> pretty tight in here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. It's high tide right now. At low tide, you can kind of scoot under it, but. The worst part of Fort Lauderdale is you're not allowed to plane anywhere. So we have to go dead slow everywhere we go. And uh, the other boats going dead slow create a pretty big wake for a little dinghy like this. So it's a bit choppy and a bit dangerous, but we're gonna give it a shot. Let's talk about Active Captain. Now, I wrote down a bunch of stuff I want to say, so I'm probably going to be looking at the screen a little bit and not the camera, and I apologize. I probably should memorize this stuff, but I'm just not that good at memorizing stuff. So, 
active captain started out as basically a map on a website that boaters could use to share local knowledge for free. So it was a really cool idea and it's a very noble idea. It's wonderful. Um, the idea was if you have some local knowledge about a given location and you want to share it with all the other boaters, you can. It's crowdsourcing, basically. Uh, we can all just go in and enter what we know and all the other boaters can see it. Pretty cool. So if you have a specific anchorage that you love and you happen to know the depths and the tides and how good the holding is and things like that, and you want to share it with everybody else, you simply log into Active Captain and you share it. Now, more recently, Garmin bought Active Captain and they started tailoring it for use on their chart plotters. But it is still free. It is still sort of an independent thing that you can use without any Garmin products at all. So we're going to start out with the most obvious place, and that's the Active Captain website. Garmin calls it the Active Captain community. Now, the website's been around a long time, and if you're near a computer right now and you want to check it out, just Google search Active Captain community, uh, click on the map button, and you can see what I mean. Um, all of the information is there on the website, but the website, and this is just my opinion, isn't very good. Uh, the coding is all sort of mid-90s. It's not very user-friendly. It's not intuitive. I just don't like the website. And that's okay because if you're boating and you need the information, you're probably not going to be opening a website to get it. You're probably going to be getting your active captain information somewhere else. So you can actually get it on your iDevice or on your Android device. They have an active captain app that is specifically built to work on phones and tablets and things like that. Now the app is a lot better than the website and it actually is a lot easier to use. It's a bit more intuitive, but for my taste, it's still a little bit clumsy. I still find it to be, you know, just a little, not very intuitive, not very user-friendly. And I think there's a lot of room for improvement. And luckily there is another way to get your active captain information. And that of course is in Navionics. Now, you guys know I'm a big advocate for Navionics, but Lady K Sailing is in no way affiliated with that company. They don't pay us to say nice things about their product, but their product, I sing it praises all the time because Navionics is simply that good. If you wanna see our video on how to use Navionics, click right up here and you can check that out. Now, obviously I bring up Navionics because they happen to have Active Captain built right into the new version. So you don't have to use the Active Captain site or the Active Captain app. And if you're navigating with Navionics anyway, you already have it. So it's wonderful. Now, just the newer version has Active Captain built in. The older versions don't. So make sure you have the newest one. So let's go ahead and get right into Navionics and I'll show you what I'm on about. All right, here we are in Navionics and I'm actually centered over Fort Lauderdale right now, as you can see. And in the video that you've been watching just now, we were actually in Lake Sylvia and I wanted to show you why I chose to anchor in Lake Sylvia. So let's go ahead and zoom in on Fort Lauderdale. When we came from the Bahamas, we came in this inlet right here. And if you want some information about that channel, you can see there's this little C right here and that's an active captain icon. So if you just click it, it says it's a Port Everglades Inlet. So we're gonna click the title and it's going to pull up a whole bunch of information. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at what other boaters have to say about the inlet. So Port Everglades is a deep water port, East Coast of Florida, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a whole bunch of information here that other boaters have written, or it's been scooped from Skipper Bob or from the charts and all kinds of stuff like that. So everything you could possibly want to know about this particular inlet, and you can edit the information because it is provided by other boaters. But once I knew that the channel worked for us, I had to figure out where to anchor. So I knew we'd be coming in this channel and then I started looking for the little green anchor icons. And as you can see, if you go up here, there is one right here in Lake Sylvia. So if we click it, we can go read about it. And you see, actually, on this page, you can see there are 76 reviews for the anchorage in Lake Sylvia. So right on the first screen, you have very popular safe anchorage. And um, then you have some navigational notes that tell you exactly how to get in, which water depth you could expect on your way in, which is pretty cool. And then right at the bottom, you see 76 reviews. So I'm just going to click on that. And we have stuff other boaters had to say. Great staging area for the Bahamas. Follow the active captain instructions to get in. Deep water. Uh, like Sylvia, excellent stop. There's 76 of these things. So we can read everything everybody's had to say about this, which is really, really awesome. It gives you a lot of information. Now, when we leave here, um, originally we had to go under this bridge right here. So you can actually see there's a bridge here and there's a little blue bridge icon. So if we click that, it's the 17th street bridge. So now we know the name of it if we're approaching it and it is an opening bridge. So you kind of do want to know the name so that you can radio them. 
and it has some information. So the phone number for the bridge, the VHF channel, the bridge monitors, and they actually have the style of bridge, double bascule bridge, and the vertical clearance when closed is 55 feet. They tell you that right in Active Captain. So you don't have to look it up or go anywhere else for that information. We were able to get under that bridge because we are just about 52, 53 feet all in. So we didn't really have to worry about it. But when we leave here and we start to head north up the ICW, you can see that they have hazards, obstructions listed. So there's an obstruction, a little orange thing, between G19, that's green 19 and green 21, a submerged rock that Towboat US knows about, and they often are in that location. Um, don't go close to the green, stay mid-channel. Great information to have, very, very helpful. But let's say I'm about to leave there for the day, and I wanna do about 40 miles, so I'm gonna use the measurement tool in uh, Navionics, and we're gonna say, let's go as far as we wanna to go today, and let's see where we end up. It looks like West Palm Beach area. So let's go ahead and zoom in there and see if there's anywhere that we can anchor in that area. Because I'm going to want to know before I set off today where I'm going to keep the boat tonight. And hey, look, there is a little anchorage here. So let's see what that has to do. Actually, we'll probably look at the bridge first. The Lantana Bridge, because we know we're going to have to go under it. And sure enough, closed. Uh, the closed height is 20 feet, so I will have to radio them. Uh, and then it down here, down here it says restriction notes. It opens on the hour and on the half hour. So now I know what time I should get there and how to get them to open it. Now we're going to go up to this little anchorage just past the bridge and let's see what people have to say about that. There's only two reviews, so it's not super common. Uh, anchorage right off the ICW, no problem. Let's see what the two people that bothered to comment had to say. Just a wide spot in the channel, not very far off. They stop there, draw about six and a half feet, no problems. Um, and then so some more information here. So it doesn't look like a great anchorage, but a few people had a couple of things to say about it. So now I'm pretty prepared for what I should expect when I get there. Another option that you can see are the little red sailboats, and that means there's a marina. So that's the uh, Suntex Marina at South Lantana. So let's go ahead and check that out and see what Active Captain has to say about it. Uh, you see there's a couple phone numbers here. There's an email address here that cruisers have entered. You have the address for the marina, the website for the marina, and they take credit checks and Visa, MasterCard, all that stuff. Um, there's a discount on fuel, you see, if you're a towboat member. And they list their amenities. They pretty much have a check mark next to everything. Now, there's 13 reviews for this marina. So it's kind of like looking uh, at Google to see the reviews for uh, different things you might want to buy. So they stop there in the tender. They couldn't marina on the radio, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, two stars, two stars, three stars. Um, so not a lot of positive stuff. Yeah, not really a lot of positive stuff. So if I was looking for a marina in the area, I'd probably skip this one because people don't have very nice things to say about it. Good information to have, though, if you're on your way through here and you do need a marina. You can also see that there's fuel. There's a fuel pump icon there. So we're going to click that. That's the Loggerhead Club and Marina. And it's got the price for gasoline. Now, it looks like they don't have diesel, so that's interesting to note. All right, let's get out of here. You can also see the little round sailboat icons also represent marina, so you can check those out. And then this should be shopping. So there's a marine store, Morel Marine. Some information about them, their address. Uh, we've got three reviews here, so we can see what that marine store is all about. Looks like uh, it's actually a yard and very good DIY yard. Everybody has good things to say. Wonderful. Continuing up the ICW, you see there's you know not a lot going on. But then there's another bridge, and also over here, there's a boat ramp. So we can check out water depths and things at that boat ramp. We can check out bridge information. So as we travel up the ICW, we were asked, how do you know which bridge is next? How do you know what it's called? How to hail them on the radio? And this is how we do it. We actually just scan up and find the next bridge, click on it, check out everything we need to know. Pretty cool stuff. So that's the Active Captain overlay in Navionics. I can't stress how much better Active Captain works in Navionics. Um, the app, the actual Active Captain app, I just don't like it very much. It's kind of clumsy. But in Navionics, it is brilliant. And it'll tell you everything that you need to know about wherever it is that you're going. And you can get it while you're not online. That's the important part. If I zoom way out, you can see the maps I've downloaded are the white areas. And any of those white areas, if I zoom in on them, it will have the map, it'll have all the depths and all the stuff like that. But it will also have all of the Active Captain stuff for that area. I don't have to go and get um, uh, an internet connection to be able to see this stuff. So really, really cool. Definitely something that you want to have if you're going to be journeying around on a boat and not know exactly where you're going or, or where to anchor when you get there. So that's it. What are you doing? 
Oh, I was just posting a picture on Instagram. Oh, yeah, there's a big fire over there. You guys probably can't big see it. Fire. Huge amount of smoke way off on the horizon. Oh, so this week we would love to thank Marnie and Richard, our newest patrons. Thank you guys so much. As you know, we can't do this without you. And that's it for episode 57 from uh, sunny, hot southern Florida. Um, if you guys like this episode or you find some value in the stuff we put on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. Uh, it helps us to know that you guys want to see the stuff and, you know, we'll make more videos that way. So, uh, anyway, thanks so much for coming along on this ride with us. Thanks so much for being part of the journey. Everybody who, uh, subscribes, likes, messages on Facebook, we love hearing from you guys. We will see you next week. If you have any suggestions for episodes or anything you want uh, me to do a how-to on, go ahead and uh, throw it down in the comments or shoot me a message on Facebook. Happy to cover whatever subject subjects that you guys want to learn about. Anyway, see you later.